In my previous videos on spontaneous symmetry breaking, we explored how spontaneous symmetry breaking can give masses to vector bosons via the Higgs mechanism. However, one often hears about fermion fields also gaining mass via spontaneous symmetry breaking. This clearly can't be provided by the Higgs mechanism. It turns out that adding what's called a Yukawa coupling has the desired effect, where a Yukawa coupling has this general form. To see that this does in fact produce a mass for the fermion field when symmetry spontaneously breaks, we'll have to stick it into a complete theory and see what spontaneous symmetry breaking does to it. The Lagrangian for a Dirac fermion in a real scalar with a Higgs potential coupled by a Yukawa term is this. At this point, we simply go through the standard program. The scalar field in the above Lagrangian develops a non-zero vacuum expectation value at low energy. Therefore, to get a physical theory at low energy, we must expand around a new vacuum. Inserting this and simplifying gives this Lagrangian. You can see that the sign on the scalar mass term is no longer tachyonic, and we've acquired a fermion mass term. You may remember the scalar sector of this theory from my first video on spontaneous symmetry breaking. I've simply added a fermion and a Yukawa coupling to it to demonstrate demonstrate fermion mass generation. There's a link to this video in the description if you haven't seen it and are interested. With this kind of effect in mind, the natural thing to do is to construct a version of this theory that also has gauge invariance in it. This way, we have a theory where spontaneous symmetry breaking generates both massive fermions via the Yukawa coupling mechanism just discussed, and at least one massive vector boson via the Higgs mechanism. Perhaps it isn't immediately obvious how to generalize the Yukawa interaction Lagrangian to gauge invariance. The most common way of doing it actually makes use of vial fermions with a coupling to the scalar field of this general form. If we take phi to be a single component complex field and the fermions to have only one isolation, a spin component, then this Lagrangian is limited to invariance under this U1 gauge transformation. This is reminiscent of how weak hypercharge works in the QEW sector of the standard model. The complete Yukawa coupling term in QEW is a good deal more complicated, however, and involves more symmetries that are also involved in spontaneous symmetry breaking. This causes the specifics of the spontaneous symmetry breaking process to take a rather different course in that theory from what we'll see here. However, all the basics are the same. I will cover QEW in a future video. In this video, I will confine myself to working through the simpler, pure U1 case just given, because it's sufficient to demonstrate the generation of fermion masses due to spontaneous symmetry breaking in a theory of this general form. However, because of the similarity with QEW, the lessons we learn here will be very important for understanding QEW in the future. The complete Lagrangian of a minimal U1 gauge theory containing such a Yukawa coupling as this now let's calculate the spontaneously broken Lagrangian density in order to see how the fermion masses come about. The scalar classical vacuum slash vacuum expectation value is this. The standard scalar field reparameterization therefore takes on this form, and the gauge transformation that absorbs the name view Goldstone boson into the vector gauge field takes on this form. We know that the original action will have the same form after the complete gauge transformation because of gauge invariance, so we can go ahead and just insert the gauge transformed field reparameterization, yielding this messy expression. In the same past video that I mentioned previously, I did the example of the Higgs mechanism in scalar QED, and as a part of that, I already explained how to simplify the the entire Higgs sector of the theory we're dealing with now. The only difference between the Higgs sector of the theory we're dealing with now and the theory I showed in that video is that the scalar charge is half of what it was in that video. Dividing the charge and the results from that video and inserting them here gives us this Lagrangian density. Now all we have to do is simplify the fermion sector. The first step is to multiply everything out and refactor. We can then rewrite all of this in terms of a Dirac spinner. To do this, we we need these equations. Applying these to the various fermionic quantities in the Lagrangian gives us these results in terms of Dirac spinners for them. We therefore have that the fermionic terms in the Lagrangian can be written like this. The chirality projection operator you see makes this what's called a chiral theory, or a theory that doesn't treat the two chiralities equally. This is similar to what happens in the QEW sector of the standard model. If we make this final mass definition, we have this spontaneously broken Lagrangian density. 
it's easier to understand the contents of this Lagrangian if we break it up. Here we see that the scalar mass term now has a physical sign, the vector boson has become massive, the chiral fermion fields have combined into a Dirac fermion field that also has acquired a mass, and the gauge symmetry is gone. Note that we aren't concerned with chiral anomalies here because this example was just intended to demonstrate how spontaneous symmetry breaking can yield mass terms for fermion fields via a Yukawa coupling. Now if you don't understand what a chiral anomaly is, that doesn't matter at this point. I just put that note there at the end because there might be some people who watch this that already know this stuff and will make some comment about it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video or at least found it interesting, please consider sharing it with a friend, giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing. Dietrich out.